meeting for December 11. We always begin with a pledge to the flag, and so if everyone would be so kind as to stand and salute the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Before we get started, I'm happy to announce that we're once again filming and broadcasting our board meetings. Uh, we're quite pleased to partner with SUNY Fredonia students and Jack. Right, Jack is with us this evening. We'll be filming our, our meetings and publishing recordings uh, to a YouTube channel. Uh, there will be a link on the Fredonia homepage to access the YouTube channel, and our friends at Public Access Television will be able to subscribe to our channel in order to telecast our, our recorded meetings. Part of this new procedure is that when the time comes, if anyone chooses to address the board, uh, they do so from the microphone that's to my left to your right. Uh, this will help to ensure all in attendance can hear the comments and questions, as well as assist with recording <coughs> and broadcasting of the meeting. That's great. Thank you, Mr. Richardson. Okay, so um, we've got, uh, okay, President's Report number two. Uh, what I'd like to do with the board, if that would be all right with everyone, uh, just before our, our second uh, opportunity to hear from the public, uh, Roman numeral 10, I would just ask if we could move it to that point uh, so that we could uh, proceed with uh, other matters first, if that would be okay with everyone. And then uh, we've got a proposed agenda for a regular meeting tonight. Uh, we also have an addendum item. Uh, and uh, actually, I think uh, we have two items, one being just the uh, addition to the financial treasury report, and then also uh, Roman numeral 12, which would be entering into executive session. We do anticipate the need for an, uh, an executive session. So in addition, uh, we've got a proposal for consent agenda, uh, and that being uh, Roman numeral 8, personnel, Roman numeral 9, <coughs> business. Adoption of the consent agenda upon a motion and a second and an affirmative vote by members present approves each and every item so designated. However, prior to the adoption of the consent agenda, any board member may remove any item from the consent agenda. This item will then come up for discussion as part of the regular agenda in order of where it is in the agenda. The purpose of the consent agenda is to expedite routine matters so that the board has more time to deal with substantive matters. But more specifically, I think our presentations this evening. It's really wonderful having everyone here for those. So with that, um, I would ask for a motion uh, to approve the agenda as presented, including the consent agenda, and then if anyone wishes to remove something after the second, uh, we would go through that. So, Mr. Hawk, with a motion to approve the agenda, and is there a second to that? Mr. Aldrich, and uh, then relative to personnel items, does anyone want to take anything out of that specifically? Yes, Mr. Uh, uh, Hawk. Rural number nine, uh, <coughs> D1. And E1 and 2. Okay. Excellent. So, anything else? Mr. Jambrone, anything? Not there. Okay. How about new biz business? Uh, anybody have anything in new business that they want to take out? No? Okay. So, with those uh, three items, uh, then. Uh, we would be moving the agenda with everything else for new business and personnel uh, on consent. So all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? <coughs> Excellent. Okay. And then that takes us uh, to the first opportunity to hear from the public, and that is uh, boards reserved this time to hear comments from the audience. Those wishing to address the board are asked to stand, give your name and address, Limit your comments to five minutes or less per individual or group. Concerns and comments during this session should be directly related to anything that's on the agenda that we just approved. Uh, there is an opportunity at the end of the meeting uh, to address the board uh, generally. So 
Uh, additionally, we have, uh, if you have questions that you wish to have a response to, uh, we do have uh, sheets at the back of the room for you to provide your questions and uh, we will get back to you. And then at uh, uh, following board meeting uh, items that where there have been questions, we'll actually provide a response to that. And possibly, depending on the nature of uh, the question and the issue, uh, may actually be posting these to the website as well. Um, so uh, with that, uh, is there anyone who wishes to address the board on any item uh, with respect to any item on the agenda? Um, yes. Yes, uh, my friends and I would like to address the board. Excellent. <clears throat> Yeah. I'm Andy Lowe. I live at 30 Ryan Place. I'm Jacob Lemke. I live on 81 Eagle Street. Mom, Laura Lee Ring. So um, we would like to address the board about something we request your permission. It's not on the agenda, but Jacob has had a very long day. Uh, he's been here all day. He went to wrestling practice, and we'd like to get him home so he can uh, start his homework. If we might just take a couple minutes of your time and address something that's not on the agenda, please. Mr. Jambrough, <clears throat> your thought. I, I guess I don't really have a problem. Mr. Hawk, I'll be okay with it. Mr. Forster, Mr. Albert, sure. Thank you very much Thank for you. accommodating us. Uh, if you remember, at the board meeting right after Veterans Day, um, I requested that the board uh, examine the idea of having a junior ROTC program here at Fredonia. And I told you that some students and parents had reached out to me and asked me about this. And Jake would like to talk a little bit about his future plans. Uh, so when I um, get like out of school, I want to be able to go into the military with the Marines and stuff. And that's like my dream. So um, I think we should go with this because, I mean, I want to like know what I'm going into and have a little responsibility and training and thought, you know? So. Well, do you want to say anything? Yeah. He has always, since he was very little, loved just in general playing with army toys and things like that, military things. Uh, we have many people in our family, his grandfather, a uh, veteran of World War II, um, he, which we are very proud of. I have had an uncle in World mm -hmm. War II. Um, he, unfortunately, <coughs> is buried over in France and not brought here. Um, it's just a very high honor to our family and this is something he's always wanted and he knows the kids down in Dunkirk have this. And he was always wondering, why don't we have it here in Fredonia, the JROTC, so that he can be a part of that as well, here in his own school. And perhaps if, if we bring it up, maybe some of the other students as well. I know there's other kids that he goes to school with that are interested in this as well. So if we could maybe have something to do with that. So we're, we're enthused about this, and we'd really like to get it going. Um, but what we don't want to do is step on anyone's toes. I know this might have to come from uh, the high school principal. The other thing we don't want to do is invest a lot of time getting um, a, a, like a survey or a petition up, get a lot of uh, uh, support for this, and then find out that the board is not in support of it. Because if we're going to do this, the board has to be in support of it. We've got some great ideas on how we might present this uh, so it doesn't cost the district any money. Uh, you can apply for grants. You also uh, recently hired a school safety officer who Mr. Sartisio pointed out is a veteran. And in his job description, it, it describes him doing some instruction. This would be a perfect opportunity uh, to, to maybe get some JROTC instruction here in the district, and it wouldn't even cost us any extra money. So what we would like to ask the board, and I actually asked this back in November, and I haven't heard a response on it, is would the board support a JROTC program here if we can demonstrate interest in the program? Thank you very much for your Thank time. You. Thank you. All right, buddy. <laughs> well, you get home now, huh? <laughs> Is there anyone else who wishes to address the board at all on any item uh, relative to the agenda? And if not, there is that opportunity at the conclusion. Thanks so much. Okay, so then uh, Ms. Uh, Troutman.
I uh, understand we have a presentation, Mr. Fabiano, and students relative to Washington, D.C. Yes, uh, Mr. Brian Fabiano has taken kids to Washington, D.C. for quite a few years, and so I did ask him if he and some of his students might kind of give you an overview of what they did this year <coughs> um, and the importance of it to them. So we have Alana Holt and Ryan Prophet. Thanks so much. Well, thank you. Thanks for having us and uh, letting us tell you a little bit about what we do uh, on our DC trip. I'm going to be really quick so that the kids can tell you about their experience. But we've been doing this trip for about 10 years. Um, I think it's 10 years. Um, but we went November 1st to the 4th this year. It's always a four-day four -day trip. And, um, you know, anything that you would expect to see on a trip to Washington, we make sure we fit it in in those four days. Um, so, you know, as soon as we got there, me tour guide, we go to Arlington, we go to the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. The kids are great, fantastic at the tomb, uh, very respectful, and, and the, um, the soldiers that really do demand it, and the kids respond in time. So, uh, it's a really, it's a nice moment to see them really understand what, you know, what, what's going on there. Um, tour the Capitol building. Um, we get to tour, you know, a lot of the building. We, the guides are really great. So we always make sure we get a nice picture out front. Um, we go to Mount Vernon, where George Washington is. On the right, that's where Washington's buried, so they get a lot of history about Washington and about you know um, the beginnings of, of the country of, of the United States. So it's a really uh, great, great experience for them there. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, we go and tour all the monuments. This is at the Jefferson Memorial with the Washington Monument in the background. The tidal pool is a really nice place to get pictures, so we took a lot of nice pictures there. The kids had a little break because we walk them all over the city for morning straight. <laughs> um, and we always get our photo opportunity at the White House. It was not a great day. It was a little cold and rainy, but uh, we walked down the block because you can't really park anywhere near it, and we made sure we got a picture there. Um, and then kind of the last, our last real fun event is the dinner cruise after three and a half days of running them ragged through the city and, and inundating them with civics and government. Uh, they can, they have a great time, they, uh, they dance, they have a nice meal. There's other schools from other parts of the country and they made, this is one of the first years, well, one of, one of the few years that they really made really good friends with these kids. Like they were changing numbers and Instagram. And uh, they really got along really good. It was cool to, to see them have a great time. So um, it, it was just another great trip. And we have a couple of uh, students who took the trip. We'll tell you a little more about it. Thanks, Mr. My name is Alana Holt, and I'm here to talk to you about the seventh grade Washington, D.C. trip. One of my favorite monuments we went to see was the Abraham Lincoln Monument because there were inspiring quotes and a beautiful view of the Washington Monument. One of my very favorite memories was the dinner cruise at night. It was a relaxing time with my friends and a nice break from walking around DC. Another touching moment is when we went to the Holocaust Museum. The museum touched all of our hearts and opened my eyes to what happened in the past. DC was a special trip and I would definitely go again if I had the chance. Thank you. Hi, my name is Ryan Prophet and I was one of the students of the seventh grade I was one of the seventh grade students who went on the DC trip. I think the DC trip was the most fun that I've ever had. One of my favorite things about the trip was visiting the World War II Memorial in the Air and Space, in the Air and Space Smithsonian Museum. Our class visited the World War II Memorial at night. It was very pretty. I enjoyed the Air and Space Museum because it was really cool to see all the airplanes that were a part of history. Overall, the DC trip was fun. It was a fun way to learn about our country's history. Thank you. And I'll just finish by saying thank you all for supporting and continuing to, to support it. And uh, next year's trip will be on your desks in the next month or so. so thanks for your consideration. And I'll sign it. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks again, Mr. Fabiano, and My thanks for bringing your students. Oh, that's wonderful. Thanks to the parents. They <laughs> busy schedules tonight, so I appreciate it. Thank you.
Okay, then uh, we have uh, Mr. Darren Paschke. We've got a presentation uh, relative to uh, Ms. Reinhardt. Yes, we have Ms. Lisa Reinhardt and Ms. Daisy Sedota are here as advisors from The Spectator. I, and uh, I believe you brought some kids with you, and, and we're going to share out on this super award-winning paper that every year just brings back incredible awards so, and, and does great things for kids. So we're, we're proud of our paper. Come on up. Well, I would like to thank the board and administration for the opportunity to share our goals and awards. Where I have with me, I have several of our students who are here, and I know Mackenzie's probably going to say something when I'm done, and we've all worked out some things. Um, so first of all, I just want to say that you know students can be proud of the product, the spectator, and the many awards. In fact, we have a few of the product here. We have the we have our awards with us, and then we also have some spectators. So people want copies. Um, do you have spectators? Yeah. I just need one. So this is, we have another issue that actually we just finished this afternoon, but the product is really, you know, what this is about, and I just want to talk about how the awards and recognition reflect something much more important, but the process that leads to the publication of the paper. So it all begins with students brainstorming for ideas, then planning their work, which includes personal interviews, research, design plans, photography, art, and more. It is as interdisciplinary as any curricular model because there are no limits to the topics that students can choose. So what skills are developed in this process? There's teamwork, pre-writing, and the entire writing process leading to publishing stories for a real audience, not just a teacher. All staff members participate in the editing of all stories. <coughs> An editorial must be refined until there is a consensus and sign-off, which means that there must be negotiation to reach agreement. This requires patience and teamwork. The authentic forum without censorship, our limits of the First Amendment rights, provides a civics lesson as well as a way for students to communicate in a safe environment. It also prepares students for the world of testing and questioning that they will face throughout their lives. So for nearly 40 years, the Fredonia District has consistently supported the spectator, with some students going on to work as journalists after graduation. However, the goal of the program is to educate students to think at a higher level, to solve problems through a process that encourages them to question and then share ideas. Creating a newspaper helps them to realize that the published work is never perfect, that they should read critically and learn to discern truth from propaganda. This could not happen without the trust, support, and encouragement that we have built. So here I have some of my students. I get what you're saying. But um, did you want to say something? Sure. So just one of our editors. Say <laughs> For the spectator, I think that it is something that's very unique to Fredonia High School, and of course, wouldn't happen without the support of not only Mr. Paschke but of everybody on the board. So thank you, and thank you for recognizing us today. But. I think the thing that's really unique about our school paper is that it's a completely um, authentic student publication, meaning that we don't have prior teacher approval. The only people that really see the paper before it comes out is us and Ms. Reinhardt. And I think that that's important because not only is it completely our own tainted opinions, but it teaches us a lot of real world responsibilities that you don't really get in any other English class or any other activity. I mean, it teaches you anything from writing skills, journalistic skills, to time management and collaboration. So I think it's just a really important factor of our school, and I'm glad that it's being recognized, and I'm glad that so many people are joining it and supporting it, so thank you. Okay. Oh, do you want to do something? Of course, go ahead. I wasn't sure. Yeah. I just want to add that one thing. Um, I think it's noteworthy that our, our principal was on the staff um, a few years ago. He was actually an editor. And he was known as Scoop Paschke. So, and I think it's kind of nice to know that, you know, he understands he gets it. We need to know that. Right, right, right. Great. Thank you. Thank you.
absolutely. Thanks so much, Ms. Reinhardt and Ms. Sedota. I really appreciate it. And students really appreciate your work. And thanks so much for bringing the extra copies. And I know there's some additional ones, so if anyone wishes to take one before you leave, that's available for you. Thank you again. This is great. Okay, then um, Mr. Sorticio, uh, update on modified baseball softball programs. Yes, um, at our board meeting on November 13th, 13th, we heard a presentation by Athletic Director Greg Lauer about including modified baseball and softball as athletic offerings for the spring of 2019. Uh, as you may recall, Mr. Lauer presented plans for practice and game scheduling as well as the overall timeline for the seasons, transportation, uniforms, and a cost estimate. Uh, Mr. Forbes and I reviewed the cost estimate, and of course the board was able to review the plans in their entirety uh, before that meeting and during that meeting. Mr. Pecos and I recently signed a memorandum of agreement to include uh, both a modified baseball and softball coach in the collective bargaining agreement. Uh, we will move forward with both of these teams this spring. I want to publicly thank Mr. Lauer for his work on, the, on this great opportunity, the board for their support and expanding options for our students. And I want to especially thank Mrs. Diane Secru, who spearheaded the petition to bring this opportunity to our attention. And I really look forward to seeing, uh, seeing these student athletes uh, play ball come spring time. That's great. Awesome. Were you any questions at all from anyone regarding that? Yeah, yeah Mr. Forster. Just a quick one, just on, like uh, an addition. Um, for, for, I don't know how this school does it, but for modified programs, do you have to have um, chaperones um, for modified programs, such as a baseball and softball program? Do you know the answer to Mr. Lauer? We do not currently have them for any of our programs. For any of the modified programs? For, like, for games and stuff? Yes. Uh, we don't have any chaperones, other than the Dunkirk games for basketball. Oh, okay. We have a chaperone for So you don't have chaperones at all for any of the other sports? For any other modified ones, no. Oh, modified. Okay. Modified. Okay. It's okay. Section 6 dictates supervisors for varsity games, correct? Correct. Yeah. The, the, actually, the officiating official contract dictates that for us, yes. Okay. Any other questions at all? Okay, then uh, we had um, Ms. Slagle was kind enough to put together minutes from our regular board meeting from November 27, so we need to uh, consider those. Could we bring those to the floor for consideration? So, Mr. Forster, <laughs> is there a second to that? Second. Second by Mr. Hawk. And uh, any uh, corrections, additions? <clears throat> Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. And opposed? Those are approved. Thanks, Ms. Slagle. Appreciate that. Then uh, we have approved the audit committee minutes from the meeting held November 13. So could we bring that to the floor for consideration? Mr. Aldrich, and is there a second to that? Mr. Hawk? Any questions or comments regarding the minutes at all? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. And opposed? Those are approved. Then that takes us to the addendum item, and that's the 31-day emergency transportation contract. We need to bring that to the floor for consideration. So, Mr. Forster, is there a second to that? Second. Mr. Hawk? That's and Mr. Uh, Forbes, anything? To Yes, yeah, so just a correction. This one is not a 31 day. This is for, for the balance of the school year. <clears throat> you had approved previously two 31 day contracts for this, which we're allowed to do, and now we need to do for the rest of the year. Okay, excellent. Thanks. Then, um, any questions? And, and this uh, is more for Mr. Sotishio. This is something that uh, we're obligated to do. Yes. Okay. okay. There's no other questions. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. And opposed? <laughs> the ads approved. Okay. Then um, for personnel changes, we've got um, D1. Uh, we have a request for fundraisers. First is to approve a request from Ben Wendell, Sarah Lewis, Stephen Romans, have a basket raffle uh, for the musical. And uh, it's also a joint <coughs> fundraiser for Project Class Night. Could we bring that to the floor for consideration? So, and that was Ms. 
Dr. Hawk, and is there a second to that? Yes. And that's Mr. Aldrich? Yeah. Mr. Hawk, any questions about that? Yeah, my question is uh, for Mr. Forbes. Uh, I remember in the past when I was involved with the uh, musical uh, that at some point they uh, told us we weren't allowed to have raffles because of some state ruling. There's a whole changed. series of regulations pertaining to raffles, and there's exclusions. You can't have alcohol or tobacco products. You can't do lottery tickets. The tickets have to be sold by adults. So what they're attempting to do is within the guidelines that we were given by the state. Okay. And so, come on, I'm sorry, let me interrupt one second. And so when this came across our uh, um, our desk, uh, Ms. Slagle and I did some research on this, and absolutely what Mr. Forbes said is correct. We, we communicated with the advisors that um, adults can sell the tickets, adults can buy the tickets, um, but anyone on the team cannot be part of that either way, as well as the, the items that are prohibited from, from being this type of raffle. Uh, we also looked at the history of the district, and this is in at least the recent history, meaning last year and I believe the previous year as well. Um, this is an activity that this board has approved in the past. I know it was approved, and I know that uh, at, at the point that the raffle was discontinued for a short period of time, it was a very similar process that different items that were being uh, raffled. So, uh, and then is it susceptible to uh, sales tax? That I have to make sure. I don't believe it. <coughs> sure. okay. Right. okay. Any other questions about that? <coughs> Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 And opposed? That's approved. Then we have a request to create a new intramural program, volleyball skill building, submitted by Amanda Krakowiak and Julie Ballone, volleyball coaches. Cost of the program is per the FDA contract. So I need to bring that to the floor for consideration. So moved. Mr. Jim Brown, and is there a second to that? Yes. And Mr. Aldrich. Mr. Hawk? Um, <coughs> First one is the uh, volleyball and um, in, in the uh, information packet that we had gotten, it ranged from first grade to seventh grade. And um, you have two uh, advisors, okay? Um, I just didn't know how that was going to work um, as far as the age difference and what was expected uh, as far as what these kids were going to do. My understanding is that it's, and it's written in here as well, is that it's, it's uh, to focus on the skills of volleyball, not necessarily the game of volleyball. So that would mean small group instruction, probably um, station work. So on one station they're working on, uh, you know, how to open the ball and when, when you're going to serve with another year of working on setting and all, those types of things. Okay. Um, my, my further understanding and the reason why I thought this was, was worth bringing to your attention uh, is that there aren't any other programs in our area. That, that teach the skills of volleyball outside of our regular physical education classes. Mm -hmm. So they're trying to develop a feeder program similar to what we have in, in soccer, where we have you know, numerous uh, soccer teams before the kids start playing for the school. Okay. And, and what are the uh, approximate numbers that have signed up? Has there been any uh, enrollment uh, anticipation? Um, I, there has not been any sign up uh, yet, to my knowledge. Is there anybody here that's to speak on it? No. I don't think so. Okay. Mr. Lauer, do you have any knowledge of, <coughs> at all about the... Uh, um, she, I know she's running it the same way we do basketball in the fall. Okay. So like we do grades two through eight. We just send a flyer home to everybody um, in those grades. And then whoever kind of shows up for that first one, that's how we do sign ups. Okay. And I know she was planning on doing it the same way. Okay. And, and you feel that two advisors is enough? I believe so, yeah. I mean, we had two when we did the basketball for 40 students, um, and that's what she was anticipating, I think, number-wise as well for volleyball. Okay. Are there, there's no volunteer to help them out? Or do, they, do, do they give kids to help them out with that? Or no? um, we, we, in basketball, had our high school players help us out, and I, I imagine she was planning to try and do the same for anyone that wasn't playing a sport while she was running this. Right. And then the last question was, is the stipend, is that stipend divided by the two of them, or is it a piece? Can I answer that? Right. 
Okay, any other questions regarding that at all? Okay. If not, then uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 And opposed? That's approved. Then we have approval request to create a new intramural program for Donia Makerspace, submitted by Ms. Lauer, Ms. Fagan, um, Ms. Korzanowski, Ms. Graham, and Mr. Wagg, and the cost per the FDA contract. Uh, could we bring that to the floor for discussion? So moved. Mr. Hawk, and is there a second to that? Yeah. Mr. Aldrich? Okay, Mr. Hawk? Okay, so um, Ms. Troutman, mm -hmm. you signed off on this. Could you speak about this? Sure. Um, Amy Lauer is kind of spearheading the whole thing, and she did this previously last year down at Wheelock. Uh, kids would ride the bus down there. Um, they're actually making, they have Legos, they, they use different uh, computers to create things. And it's a great way for kids that don't necessarily are at um, our advanced classes, or hands-on kids, and they really connect with having the ability to create. And so that, those group of people will be meeting with the kids. Mm -hmm. And um, it'll be on Saturdays, and so. Well, uh, it shows different days. Yep, yep. Uh, Once during the Saturdays. week, and then on Saturdays as well. Okay. Yeah. Because I didn't get any description in my pamphlet as to what was um, going to constitute the program. Sure. All right. <clears throat> and then, um, what grade levels? Middle school. Just middle school. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be. Five through eight. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, is there anything more advanced than what you explained? I could get you a more advanced explanation, but okay. a lot of different, I, I don't know exactly what she has, but a lot of them are um, Lego robotics. Kids put things together, they connect it to the computer, it moves. Um, they have different types of robotics that they can have a pathway and they program it to move in a certain way. Uh, they can actually um, do different types of uh, challenges. So they could give students certain materials and ask them to create something and have it do perform a specific thing. Mm -hmm. So there's a ton of different things that um, you can do in maker spaces. I don't know what she is going to specifically use. We talked a little bit about what um, what it is, but not specifically. I can get that for you if you'd like. Okay. And, and uh, do you have an idea what the attendance is going to be? Um, they met the other night, and um, just before they even advertised it, they had five kids in there. Um, they just created a video advertising it that will be on the announcements uh, this next week. And so already, just by kids seeing them create the announcements, they've had some kids come forward. So I'd anticipate anywhere between um, eight to ten kids to start with. Okay, because I see we've got five instructors for that. Mm -hmm. okay. It's because it's so individualized based on what the kids are interested in. Okay. So I walked in there the other day when they were just kind of trying to get everything together. Um, you had one teacher with a student over here, you had one on the floor, you had one at another table, and they were all doing different things. So mm -hmm. that's why there's so many. Okay. And then last question for uh, John. This is, there's a stipend here, and this is five into that number? Yeah, that's based on session and contract dollars per session. Of so it's not five times that number. <coughs> We have teachers who believe in the importance of it. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, if there's no other questions then, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 And opposed? That's approved. And um, boy, uh, thanks everyone for uh, your work on that. Uh, and thanks to the teachers too. Uh, both those intramural programs are really wonderful and uh, much appreciated. So thank you. Okay, then uh, we did have a uh, president's report which we moved to the community, uh, which we moved to uh, this point, and 
I uh, wanted to lay this out for the board and uh, get some ideas relative to one interest to uh, if there is interest that we consider uh, either a special meeting in January or we use maybe the second meeting in January uh, time uh, at the conclusion of our regular meeting. So uh, let me just run something out. So in October we had a presentation by uh, Dr. Brown and uh, talked about strategic planning and uh, the, uh, the impression uh, certainly that I was left with was that there were real concerns about uh, the time commitment that something like that uh, could involve. And, and we've got uh, not just uh, by the board, uh, but administrators, also uh, any stakeholders that we may ask to be involved in such a process. So one of the things that uh, uh, we looked at, if I can include Mr. Sorticio and Ms. Gagenschatz, um, is uh, uh, another maybe route through this. And the three of us discussed the idea of possibly a community forum or forums. Now, thought being that uh, this is not a traditional strategic planning process, but uh, could maybe be helpful relative to some of the issues that uh, we really need to deal with as a district, as a board, and frankly as a community. So uh, one of the things that I would like to get out to everyone is a guide to organizing community forums just so you can have kind of a little bit of background information relative to that. Uh, but uh, what we would look to do is have the board uh, work to identify uh, some of the uh, key issues that uh, we all know uh, we have to wrestle with. I use as an example uh, the work that Mr. Jan Brown and Ms. Uh, Paul Fortna is working on right now uh, with respect to a 